Well, hey there, it is Bill Weemoth from HistoryHighlights.com. I am sending you all the best on this wonderful July the 27th. And for today's feature, we go again to the Library of Congress. In my opinion, one of the greatest websites and greatest organizations to preserve history in all of the world. How about a little tidbit today for architect Cyrus Eidlitz? American architect best known for designing One Times Square, the former New York Times building on Times Square. He is the founder of the architecture firm presently known as HLW International, one of the oldest architecture firms in the United States. Architect Cyrus Lazelle Warner Eidlitz was born on July 27, 1853 in New York, New York. His father, Prague-born architect Leopold Eilitz, was an influential theorist who became a founding member of the American Institute of Architects in 1857. Educated in New York and Europe, the younger Eidlitz is known for designing numerous public buildings including Chicago's Dearborn Street Station and the Buffalo Public Library, but Eidlitz's work, like that of his father, was influenced by Gothic and Romanesque revival styles on the second half of the 19th century. And in 1904, Cyrus Eidlitz collaborated with Alexander Mackenzie on the New York Times building. Now, this steel-framed skyscraper with Beaux Arts facade and Gothic accents created for New York Times pu publisher Arthur Oakes. Located at the intersection of 7th Avenue, Broadway, and 42nd Street, the building filled a triangle at the base of Longacre Square, soon renamed Times Square, in honor of the building. When it opened, the Times building was the second tallest in Manhattan and soon became the cornerstone of a growing Broadway theater district. By the 1930s, dozens of theaters, including the Ziegfeld Theater, competed for audiences in and around Times Square. Now, the urging of Arthur Oakes, Eidlitz, and McKenzie connected the Times Building underground to the 42nd Street subway station. As early as 1904, New Yorkers were riding the subway from City Hall in Lower Manhattan to 145th Street in just 26 minutes. Within a decade, the newspaper outgrew the Times building and moved to larger quarters. After it was sold in 1961, the original ornate facade was replaced by sheer walls of concrete and marble. Today, the well-known tower at one Times Square is rarely used by tenants, but instead is covered in large and elaborate electronic billboards that almost overwhelmed the familiar news ticker, a descendant of the first scrolling text bar installed in lights around the building in 1928. Even so, the tower remains a focal point of Times Square, where since 1907, crowds have gathered every December 31st to watch the lighted ball on its roof drop as they welcome in the new year. Incredible architecture, beautiful design, and a place that is like no other Thanks so much to all of you out there for tuning in and listening. Hope you're learning little tidbits. I love studying these and discovering new things as well. It's a fun adventure, a journey through history. Thanks for joining me on this journey of discovery. And lots more to explore over at HistoryHighlights.com. Hope you come over and prowl around and visit all we have to offer. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. <music>